welcome back. Critics have called it the crack cocaine of the computer gaming world and the most dangerous game on the market today. But World of Warcraft just grows and grows. WOW is one of the most popular online games out there, claims to have more than 11 million registered players worldwide. However, like many potentially addictive pastimes, this one can be unhealthy. There was a story from Sweden last year of a teenager collapsing after 20 straight hours at the controls. Another story from Korea of a child dying while her parents went out to play the game. The Listening Post's Sam Sapin now on this new media phenomenon, its real-world implications, and some of the steps that have been taken to deal with this particular form of online addiction. The virtual worlds of online games are becoming increasingly complex and immersive. Massive multiplayer online role-playing games like World of Warcraft are more popular than ever. In World of Warcraft, players develop online characters or avatars who evolve over time, progressing in both power and potential. Millions of digital avatars representing human players from all over the globe roam around massive mythical virtual lands. As more and more people spend more and more time in these virtual worlds, there are an increasing number of real world properties and consequences. Hi, my name is Nivlom and I am a gnome rogue in World of Warcraft. So I would say that my character in Warcraft is very similar to me. Um, and I'm in no ways a really physical guy. So playing a rogue, the sneaky guy, I would say that I'm kind of like that. Some people would be really reserved to identifying with an 8-bit, really cartoonish looking character. It doesn't really hold much ground, but now these games where you can see the details of their face and people will be more willing to identify with them. The video games industry is the fastest growing form of entertainment, now outselling music and movies worldwide. There are two elements to immersion in video games. We constantly try and innovate by doing something that's fresh or different with gameplay that people haven't seen before, an experience that they haven't had. And that's fairly easy to do because, of course, it's not real life. We don't have those traditional reality constraints. And then cinematically, we're really pushing boundaries now with technology, near photorealistic light rendering, levels of animation that are unprecedented and haven't been achieved in the past, technology that gives you a greater sense of reality. Warcraft's virtual economy is worth real money. Gold farming is already a massive industry. Gold farmers build up Warcraft gold by performing repetitive actions in-game. This virtual gold is then sold for real-world currency online. In China, virtual gold farming has become a real-world job. Chinese gold farmers work long hours, often in sweatshop-like conditions. This is their physical workspace, but their real work takes place inside a virtual realm. The World of Warcraft is one of the most lucrative games for gold farmers. Most of their customers are Western gamers in the US and UK, but many players object to this practice. Definitely in World of Warcraft, the American-Chinese thing is pretty big. I have run into quite a few Chinese gold farmers, and you can't even talk to him because he doesn't speak your language. <laughs> This issue has led many Western gamers to create anti gold farmer videos and post them online. That's it! I'm sick of you gold farmers infesting our servers and inflating our prices! But worst of all, you take the fantasy out of a fantasy game! Ting Topper Tekan? Smith and Jones Clinic in Amsterdam has been treating addicts battling with alcoholism and chemical dependencies for years. 
It's now the first clinic in Europe to also treat video game addiction. It's my feeling that online gaming is going to be one of the biggest problems that this world has ever seen. It's only starting right now. But the whole world is in denial about this problem. I realized that I had a problem because I lost my social life. Uh, I lost all my friends. I was isolating, only sitting at home. My first gamer that I worked with when he came in, he was telling me about it and I looked at him and you know, I said to him, you've got to be gaming, you've got to be kidding me. What I can say, I've been working with addicts for many, many, many years. I see a percentage of the gamers that do come into our place, they seem to be suffering from the genetic version of addiction. I played games as much as I could, so if it was possible, 24 hours a day. They are flunking out of school. Their health is usually actually quite bad. I mean, you have 18, 19, 20-year-old kids who have been sitting inside for four or five years behind a computer. I mean, their muscles have atrophied almost. Sometimes we bring groups together where you have young people who are in a chemical dependency, and then we, we bring the gamers in, we do groups together with them, and it's actually quite interesting to see so you spent how many years of your life playing World of Warcraft? Four. One. And what did you achieve by playing the game? Um, Nothing. You know, I like my life way more than I did before, so I don't feel like playing games anymore. If all of this continues in the way that it is right now, it could be that parents are putting a loaded gun in the hands of a five-year-old when you hand them their first video game. I think it'd be really cool to be in a fantasy world and be running around with swords and magic and all that, but I understand that it's, it's fantasy. I don't necessarily want that to become my life or that it's better than my life. Certainly, it sometimes seems more interesting. Are these virtual worlds in danger of taking over our physical lives? Or are they merely another space to play? Maybe it's up to you and how you play the game. Now. We are one. More Global Village Voices now on World of Warcraft. The fact that these games uh, take place in massive worlds with thousands of other people, your exploits that would be exciting anyway suddenly take on a whole new uh, level because there are other people to observe it and those exploits become even more fantastical as a result. They, they are more real. And I guess that, um, that the genre, fantasy, has kind of been legitimised in the last several years uh, down to TV shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, and big films like Lord of the Rings means that people who normally have been uh, steered clear of these kind of genres that, that would normally be the proviso only of fans are quite happy to sink their teeth into these kind of games. Gold farming is now regarded in, by most games companies as something that players can be banned for. Other than that, the consequences of, play, of gold farming in the real world are simply the same as working in a sweatshop. It's long hours for low pay. And finally, the World of Warcraft craze has not escaped the attention of the people at The Onion. That's the satirical American website that started out as an online newspaper and has since moved into generating mock television reports. The Onion is taking the fascination with this game to the next absurd level by coming up with an idea for a sequel called World of World of Warcraft. Players be warned, this is a joke video. There is no such game. The Onion's World of World of Warcraft is our internet video of the week. We'll see you next time at the Listening Post. World of Warcraft. It has 9 million players worldwide, many who say they spend hundreds of hours playing the game every week. Here at the Blizzard Entertainment offices, creators say they couldn't be any more excited about the new expansion pack, World of World of Warcraft. So here I'm playing as a character named Greg, who's playing World of Warcraft as a level 3 gnome rogue. So uh, I'm going to press my up arrow key, and that's going to make him press his up arrow key, which is going to make the character on his screen kind of move forward across the screen. The game promises to bring a level of realism to video gaming never before seen. Here, I'm going to press Alt-Shift-7, and that's going to make uh, my character uh, start scrolling through the terms of use agreement and the end user license agreement. 
and it's fun. The graphics are amazing. Uh, they're revolutionary. I mean, when you're when you're staring at the computer screen, you actually believe that you're in a dimly lit basement staring at a computer screen. Based on the game's big success, Blizzard Entertainment is already looking ahead to their next release planned for fall of 2009. Fans love World of World of Warcraft, and we know they're going to want their characters to be able to play the game as well. So we've already started work on World of World of Warcraft, the World of Warcraft realm. For the Onion News Network, I'm Jeff Tate.